In this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take a Photoshop composite and turn it into Facebook 3D using nothing but Photoshop. What we're going to do is we're going to take an image where I did a composite with some dragons and Taylor Davis, and I'm going to show you guys how to separate this, push it into a Facebook 3D image, and then I'm going to wrap it up with seven tips for successful Facebook 3D images. Okay, so what we need to do right now is separate the photograph into different planes, meaning that we've got an object that's going to be more forward and a background or a midground that's going to be here and a background that's going to be all the way back here. We're actually creating what's known as a depth map. So the depth map essentially just goes from white at the very front, black at the very back, and in different shades of gray in between will determine how far forward or how far back an object will be in 3D space. All right, let's jump in and have a look at a composite. There's a couple of things to bear in mind. One, you want to make sure your masks are really good. And the other thing is areas of transparency, you know, where you've got the transparent overlap don't work very well. So for this particular image, I had to remove some of my um, atmospheric effects in order to get this to work. So here we are. I've actually simplified this a little bit, merged a few layers together, but we can see we've got essentially a foreground element here which is fading back into the distance. Then we've got this background, this rock with the castle. And then in the midground, we've got our dragon here. And then we've got our other dragon, which obviously is further back. And then we've got our hero here, which is uh, Taylor Davis, an amazing violinist. Check out her stuff on YouTube. And uh, what we want to do now is isolate all of these sections. So what I've done is I've just labeled these layers in red to make it a little bit easier to find. So the first one, if I Alt or Option click here, it's going to show this area here. So we want to select it, but the thing is that area of semi-transparency is not going to work well. So I'm going to hold the Shift key to turn that off. And then essentially what we do is we just go down here and we make a selection around this area. Make sure you select the correct area uh, layer. Okay, so I've got a good selection around there. Now to put the layers back, just hit the Alt or Option key and click the I icon. And then it puts all the layers back to how they were. It's just going to make it a little bit easier for us to work. Notice it looks weird there. That's because the mask is off. Shift click to turn that mask back on. Excellent. Let's go to the very top here. And I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm just going to fill it with gray or whatever. It doesn't matter. We'll come back to these later. And we're just going to call this foreground. Then the next section coming through that foreground is going to be a background there. So we want to go through it and we want to select that. So if we go down here, option click, we can see we've got this castle area there. So what I've done is I've saved you a little bit of time is I've really created these selections. So I'm just going to choose select load selection. And we've got the castle and we can see it right there. So you know how to make the selection. I just want to save the time of doing that each time. So we're going to hit option and click on that eye icon. And now we want to create a layer for that. So let's just create a new layer above it, fill it with gray, and we're going to call it castle. And if I could spell castle, it'd be even better. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to select some other things. Let's go down here. We've seen we've got that. We've got that area. Let's select our dragon up there, which is very simple. There's the dragon, flying dragon. Just control click or command click on it and that will load as transparency. And we just fill that. And we just call it FD for flying dragon. And make sure you have the right layer selected when you fill it. Otherwise, you're going to be filling the other one. So that's just a thing to watch out for. Now we want our midground dragon there. So we've got our large dragon there. If I control or command click, notice that selects it there. So we've got our selection. Let's go up the top. LD for large dragon. And we're just going to fill that. Great. And finally, we want to select Taylor. So let's just go under the select here. And I'm just going to use the selections I already created to save a little bit of time. We've got it selected there. Let's create a new layer, call it Taylor. And we're going to fill it with gray. Excellent. Let's turn all our layers on. And this is what we get. 
And now we want to create a background. So let's just create a new layer, drag it down, and this is going to be our background. So why don't we actually start looking at the tones now? We know black is as distant as we can get, so we're going to make our foreground color black. Let's click on our background color. And we're going to make that a dark shade of gray. So it's going to be almost flat. And why don't we just go from top to bottom. I'm going to start from about here and go down. All right, so we can see we've got black up here and it's just fading to a little bit of gray there just to uh, give us a little bit more body. And we'll just call that one BG for background. All right. So the next thing we want to do is let's turn off everything except for our castle here. So we kind of want this castle. And so why don't we just select this, hit control L for levels. And now I can just darken this down. And so we're going to push this one back into the background, not all the way back, but back quite a bit. Probably about there is nice. And let's have a look at our foreground. Make sure we put our castle behind it because we've got these rocks. Now notice I did this kind of flat, just a flat shade, and that's, that's going to work fine. But here we want this kind of fading back. So that means we need it lighter at the front than we need it at the back. So why don't we grab our gradient tool here, and I want to sample this. So I'm going to hit Alt or Option. So I'm going to sample that area in the background. That gives us our foreground color. Now we know we need to go a little bit lighter than that. So let's just pull that up. We can see we've got 25% there. So why don't we just pull that up a little bit. Let's take it up to about 30 and you can see that under B. Now the reason for that is I want the ending of this to not go back as far as that, but pretty close. And now we're going to come forward. We want to make this quite light. So we're selecting here. And now we're going to have a gradient. We want this gradient to run light at the front, dark at the back, and that's going to give us our distance. So let's make sure we select the right layer. Control click to load the selection. Now if our gradient tool, let's start and just kind of see where we go. Okay, it's going the wrong way. So we want to just kind of go like that. And I'm going to stop about here. The reason I'm not going all the way down is I want most of that blend to happen in the background and not so much in the front. And the reason for that is because that's the way things fall off. And if you look in nature, the way things fall off in distance, um, atmospheric per perspective, uh, things get compressed as they get further away and they're expanded as they come more forward. All right, so now we've got that there. I notice we've got a little bit of a line there. If something like that happens, just select that. And what I'm going to do is just nudge down with the keyboard twice and see that and then just Command Shift I for invert and delete. And that gets rid of that edge there. So that's kind of how you do that if that happens. And I might actually give this a little bit of a blur too, because I want to kind of soften that. So I'm going to choose filter blur. And we're going to give it just a little bit of a blur there. So this edge now is just going to kind of fall off into infinity. Great. Next thing. Let's just kind of turn on our other layers so we can see what we're starting to work with. And the reason I want to look at the other layers now is I want to see where we're at. Because remember, white is forward, black is back. And so we want to kind of see where they are in space based on these tones. So I know this dragon here needs to be a little bit lighter than this, but a little bit darker than that if I want to put it in that region. So in fact, what I could do is I could just hit the I key for the eyedropper and select there. And that's going to give me that shade of gray. So that shade of gray is about where we are there in depth. It might be too dark for this dragon, but let's try it on the flying dragon. And I'm just filling with that. And you know what? It looks pretty good, but I'm going to lighten it up just a little bit. Control L for levels. And notice we can always do that and we can lighten or darken these up. And the reason for that is I don't want this dragon to be as large as the castle. So I need to bring it forward just a little bit. All right, so now we're going to work on this dragon. Now, there's an important thing to bear in mind. If I want this to be anchored to this tone here, the feet need to be exactly the same shade as where it's touching. Otherwise, when we do the parallax, things are going to start moving and it's going to move around and it's not going to be anchored. So we definitely need to anchor that. So what we're going to do is just grab our eyedropper, get around about where the feet are. We're selecting that and that's where we want to start in our tone. So let's make sure we've got that dragon control click on the thumbnail to load it. Why don't I just fill it with just that solid color control D and that should blend seamlessly in here. You might see a little bit of discrepancy from time to time. 
And there's a couple of ways we can deal with that. In fact, why don't we do that right now? I'll show you how to do that. And just because of the gradient happening here, so what we want to do is we're just going to select around those feet. We're going to choose Select, Modify, Feather. I'm going to feather this by about two pixels. So that means now I can blur this a little bit. So let's choose Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to give it just a little bit of blur. Now this is very subtle. There we go. And control D to turn off that selection. And notice it just kind of blends those feet in a little bit better. This is going to work quite well. All right, next thing we want to do is we want to get Taylor. Now notice it looks like there's a whole gradient going through in here. And if we hit the Alt or Option, notice it's not. That's the same shade. But um, just watch out for that because sometimes you get an optical illusion when you've got another gradient working it against it. You would swear that this is darker than there. So keep that in mind. Don't trust your eyes. Make sure you use your eyedroppers and check. All right, so we're going to load up Taylor and selecting her layer. Make sure the foreground here is right. So I want to select that shade there right where her feet are going to be touching on there. And I'm just going to fill her with this for now. And I'll just hit Control H to hide that selection for a second. And we can see, yep, see how nicely that's blending in. That selection is still active, it's just hidden. And what I need to do is I need to darken this side down a little bit. So I'm going to select there. That gives me the shade I want. Let me just hit Control H again just so you don't get confused. So I'm selecting the ground on the back foot there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a brush and I'm going to make this brush nice and big and it's a soft brush. And what I'm going to do, make sure I'm up to 100% opacity and I'm just going to click once and Control D, turn it off. See, now we've got this nice blend going up, which is going to give us a little bit of distance. I can also load her up a bit there. And if we hide these, we can see, okay, what's forward and what's back. If you really wanted to get carried away, um, you could get in here and add some more depth, but I'm noticing that foot goes back, this foot goes forward. We don't need to do a lot more than that. So let me control D. And there we go, we've got our depth map set. So why don't I just put all of these into one layer, just shift click, control G, and we'll call it depth. All right, and now we can just toggle that on and off quickly. All right, so let's export this image. File. Export, save for web. And we're going to go into here, save. All right, so we're going to name this Taylor Dragon Charmer 3D. Just click save. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to export again, this time with our depth map on. File, export, save for web. Export, save for web. Notice I'm using JPEG. Okay, if you're doing a complex mask and people are going to be looking at it using Oculus or 3D glasses and looking at extremely uh, close up, then what you might want to do, this would be the time maybe when you save this as a ping. And the reason for that is because the depth maps can get um, compression artifacts. Um, and so if you're using it with the 3D glasses and it's very detailed, save it out as a ping. Otherwise, just the JPEG is going to work fine. And of course, you can have the JPEG image and you can mix and match and have a PNG as your depth map and that'll work fine. All right, so let's save this out. We want the same name there. Just click on it to grab its name. And of course, we're going to do an underscore depth to create the depth map. And really, that's the key. All you need to do is name your depth map exactly the same name as your original file with underscore depth, and then Facebook is going to look at the two, load in the photo, grab the depth map, and apply that to the photo. Okay, here we are on my page. Click here and make sure that you set your privacy to only me so no one else will see it. Choose photo video and select both the image and the depth map. Facebook will recognize what's happening and it will build a 3D photo. And here we go. Let's have a look. Check that out. See how we can go up and down. See the depth that goes all the way back into the distance. See how that just goes off into infinity. And notice how the background here with the castle moves at a different pace than the foreground. 
So we've got that nice parallax effect and you can see obviously the depth here with the dragon and with Taylor. And you can even see between the front leg and the back leg, you can kind of see how that works. And just click on it to view it full size. And where these tend to look really cool is when you look at them on your phone, you can just move your phone around like this. And uh, I'll add a link to this so you guys can check it out on my Facebook. Now for the seven tips, or I call them the seven rules of 3D Facebook photos. Number one, if you wanna anchor something such as feet to the ground, make sure they start at the same shade of gray. If they don't, things will float around. Number two, certain things you wanna protrude and move around, other parts you want to smoothly blend into everything else. Those edges that you want to smoothly blend, make sure you blur those and keep the other edges sharp. Tip number three, black is back, white is forward, and everything in between is where the 3D depth happens. Be aware of going from extreme white to an extreme black because sometimes that's way too much movement and doesn't look good. Limit your shades to the region you want to work in and experiment. Tip number four, you can upload in JPEG or PNG or ping. Just remember that the ping is 10 times larger than the JPEG. And also if you are uploading as a ping, there's no reason to upload your photo as a ping. It's just a waste of space and time. Save it out as a JPEG and it can read it perfectly well. In fact, your photo and your depth map don't even have to be the same resolution. They just need to be the same aspect ratio, but I would keep them the same size. Tip number five, think about where you let your gradients blend because as they blend, there's depth in there and those areas can stretch. So you can have a person, suddenly they start stretching and looking all strange. That's because the gradient's running through them. Certain areas, just run the gradient in areas where they connect or where you want to add that depth, such as ground and things moving away. Flat planes, keep them a solid shade. Tip number six, maximum file size is 4096. Aspect ratio doesn't matter, just make sure it doesn't go larger than that in any side. Tip number seven, and I'm sure you'll find this one useful. When you're looking at your 3D photos, if you see like a blurred ghost behind it or is an object that's stuck on the plane and not moving in 3D, that means it's not properly selected. Go back into your 3D map and make sure you've selected it nice and cleanly, and then you won't have any more of those problems. All right, so I don't know about you, but I get super excited about these kind of images. But I got a question for you. Actually, I've got two questions for you. The first question I'm gonna ask you is, do you use any other Adobe products apart from Photoshop? If so, let us know in the comments underneath. And the second question, uh, do you guys drink coffee or tea? I'd love to know. Tea or coffee? Drop us a comment and let me know. So anyway, guys, if you like these kind of tutorials, hit the subscribe button right now and become part of the cafe crew. What does that mean? It means you get a new tutorial from me every single week and ring that notification bell so you know when I upload it, which is usually every Tuesday. And if you like this video, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.